Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. This is part three of my series on extracting an OLE image from a field in your Access table. Let's continue. If you haven't watched parts one and two, what are you doing? Go watch those first. Get back here when you're done. All right, so here's where we're at after part two. We got Spock in here. We hit Extract Image. It opens up Paint. And then after a second, it pastes them in there. Now, we have to save this image to our folder. So let's close this. See, it's gonna ask if you wanna save, just say no for now. Let's continue with the automation. All right, I always keep a little button up here on my quick launch toolbar to go back to my VBA editor. I got a video on that somewhere. <laughs> All right, so we've pasted in the image. We shouldn't have to wait after that, but I like to, just a, just a tiny bit. So maybe sleep 100, that's a 10th of a second, like 100 milliseconds, right? Just give it, just give, give it a chance to breathe. All right, so now we're gonna save the file, and we're gonna do that by first hitting um, Alt-F to go to the file menu. There is no quick shortcut for save as. Uh, yeah, in some applications it's Control-Shift-S. I do believe the paint supports F12, but I don't like using that. I like to just use Alt-F, because uh, it, it, I don't know, just I've had bad experiences trying to use function keys with send keys, especially if, if you've got a laptop. Because a lot of people with laptops you know, you got those special function keys that are laptop related. So this just, this works all the time. All right, so we're going to send keys, Alt F. Now Alt is that guy, the percent sign, and then a lowercase F. All right, don't forget to keep it lowercase. If you make it capital, you're going to get Alt Shift F. All right, now we got to go down five times. All right, send keys. What's the down arrow? It's down like that. We got to do that five times. Now, if you want, you can make a loop but I'm just gonna do it for simplicity's sake. One, two, three, four, or five. Okay, and then we gotta go right once, which is right. And then we have to go down one more time to JPEG. All right, and you can comment all this if you want to. This is, right, the file on the menu. Go down, 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 right, right, right. And now we're on JPEG format. Okay, now we're gonna press Enter, send keys, Enter, and again, we're gonna wait now. Sending those arrow keys, usually you don't need a delay in there because it's usually pretty quick to respond to those. But when you are opening up a dialog box, sometimes that takes a bit. So we're gonna sleep half a second. And again, I, I've, I've done this a dozen times. I've tested it and, and this is what works on my system. You might need to add more delays. If you got a really slow system, you might need a delay between each one of these keystrokes here. Okay, now, once we hit that JPEG, and wait, it's gonna open up the save as dialog. Now here's where we have to send keys the file name, okay? And you get to watch this on your system. If you're only getting a piece of that file name, like the last half of it, put a longer delay there before it opens because it's, it's taking its time to open and you're not waiting long enough to send the full keys. In fact, you know what? I think I'm gonna wait a full second just to make sure, okay? Now we got the save as dialog, so we're gonna send keys our file name, send keys file name. Okay, that'll send this whole thing. All right, and again, you might need to break this up and pause and all that stuff. I'm gonna talk about that more in the extended cut. I'm gonna break this up into actual keystrokes. But this will work 99% of the time. Okay, now here's where you want to press enter again. So we're gonna send keys enter after you put the file name in there. And we're gonna sleep again. This time I'm gonna sleep a good two seconds, all right? This is where it's saving the file, and we want to wait before we close paint. How do we close paint? Send keys, Alt F4. So that's going to be Alt is that guy, and then F4. Yeah, I know, I don't like function keys, but F4 tends to work. <laughs> I believe it's on the close menu, or it's on the Alt F menu too. Let me see. Yeah, if you've got a laptop or whatever and it's not working, you can go Alt F and then come down to exit. Um, and keep in mind, anytime they make an update to this program, it's going to have to change. That's why I'm saying this is kind of a one and done thing. You're going to customize this for your system, your version of Paint, okay? And then when you're done, you hope, you're probably never going to have to see this code again. But if you've got 5,000 images or 2,000, right, in your database and you want to get them out once, this is going to work just once for you. Once you customize it, then you're done with it. All right, debug, compile. Let's come back out here. I want I always like to close my forms and reopen them before I run any code. That's just me. All right, let's try extracting it. You ready? Click and let's see what happens. 
All right, it's doing some thing here. What's going on? There's that. You okay? See, all right. So we need a bit more of a delay. If you see weird things happen like this, it's it tried doing too much. We don't have any, as as much delay as we need between these keystrokes. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I like to do. Instead of send, instead of using raw send keys, I'm going to make my own send keys so it doesn't just they don't all bunch up on each other. Here's what I like to do. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create my own subroutine. All right, so private, private sub. Come on, I can't type today. My send keys. Okay, we're going to send it what we're going to send. So S as a string. Okay, and in here, we're going to send keys, whatever was sent in, comma true, make sure it waits. We're going to put a brief delay in here between each key. So I'm going to put a sleep, maybe 100 milliseconds is good. And then a do events that, that frees up the processor to keep processing things. Okay, I got a whole separate video on do events if you want to go watch that. So now instead of using send keys everywhere, we're going to use my send keys. I have to do this once in a while. So starting from the top, we're going to replace every send keys with my send keys. All right. And if you, if you think you need those longer delays in there, you can leave those there too. You, you can't go too wrong with having long delays. It's just going to take longer for the process to run. But if you want to set this and forget it, Right. If you want to just click go and then go have lunch and come back, which is how long you're going to probably have to wait for it to do 2000 images. That's what you want. You want it to be sure of itself and wait between each keystroke. All right. So now my send keys is going to send that key. OK, it's going to put a brief pause in there, do events, free up the processor and then return back where it was. This usually has a better success of working. Let's debug compile. Come back out here. Let's close you down. Open it back up again. Let's give it another try click let's see you should see it actually happen yeah see there we can actually see it working now all right that's much much better all right so it seems like it worked let's go check our folder where's the folder now there it is ah there's pick one and look it's, it's an image it extracted it perfectly i think i'm going to put a little bit more of a delay in there again this you'll have to adjust this based on the speed of your computer i'm going to go 300 just so we can see it working better all right, I would rather, like I said, err on the side of waiting too long. All right, extract image. Okay, good, good, good. You can see it's actually slower with the keystrokes now. Okay. All right. And let's, oh, where's my folder? There it is. All right, let's try another one. Okay, ready for Kirk. Go. Okay, there's Kirk. Save as, good. Send those keys there. Good. We'll probably put less of a delay in the save. All right. Maybe throw a beep in here too so we know when each one's done. All right. Beep. Let's go check the folder. And there we go. There's Kirk. All right. So we're on the way now to be able to extract all of these. Now, the only piece that's missing is a loop. Right? We want a loop. Start from here. And then when this one's done, go to the next one. When this one's done, go to the next one and go through all the images. Go through all the records that actually have a picture in it. Okay, I've shown you 99% of what you need to do to be able to do that. We're going to finish it in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. What we're going to do is make a loop. We're going to start with record one. We're going to just go down all the records. If it finds an image, it's going to extract it and then save it and then move on to the next one and continue until we're done. And then when you go to lunch and you come back, all your images will be in a folder and and oh, I forgot one thing. And we'll save that file name in the customer table in a field so that now we've extracted the image, right? Now we've got the file name where that image is in the table. We can point to it like a normal picture, like I show in the images video. And then you can delete that OLE object field. You don't need it anymore, right? And then compact your database. You can get all your space back. It's going to be a wonderful day. Cats will be marrying dogs. It'll be raining fire from the sky. But, but at least our database will work. So there you go. <laughs> if you like learning with me, if you enjoy this stuff, if you want to learn more, I got tons and tons of developer lessons. I'm actually working on developer 45 right now. Well, not not right now, but you know, I'm in the middle of it, kind of. Uh, but come to my website, check it out. Tons of stuff. Uh, I teach stuff in the order you should learn it, unlike in my tech help videos where I kind of jump around because tech help videos are really more just to solve a specific problem. Whereas in my developer lessons, we teach things in the right order, right? We're going to learn a little about this, a little about that, a little about this, and every lesson builds on the one before it. So come to my website, check it out. There's a link right there. But that's it. That's part three. That's the end of this series for now. 
I always sometimes I come back and later and I add part four. Uh, but that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing free four hours go watch it and okay okay a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course so I do now have a quicker Microsoft access for beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes and no I didn't just put the video on fast forward <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well now if you like level one level two is just a dollar that's it one dollar and that's another whole like 90 minute course Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay. Want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. 
And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.